All right, we're going to take a look at 2.2b, uh, which is our continuation of modeling with quadratic functions. Now, we're going to be able to look at data or a scatter plot, a table, as you can see on the screen, uh, and be able to figure out first off, is it a quadratic or is our function linear or is it neither? Now, if it's linear or quadratic, we're going to have to be able to come up with an equation of either the two functions. Uh, to get started here, and you're going to want an, uh, a separate sheet of paper, actually, because uh, there's just not enough space to do all the work. Um, let's start with number 10. Okay. Now, whether the function is quadratic or linear or whatever the case may be, uh, the main thing what I want to look at first are my values of x or the inputs. Okay. Right here, we have time in days. And when I look at the values of x, I want to see, all right, is the, are the intervals consistent? From 0 to 3, that's plus 3, right? So plus 3, 3 plus 6. If I add 3, it gets me 6. Uh, sorry, and then 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 gets me 15. So that's good. The next thing what I'm going to look for are what we call common differences. Okay, so when I take a look at my values of y, are they consistent? Now I want to look to see if there is a first common difference or a second common difference. So when I take a look from 36 to 30, that's minus 6. From 30 to 24, minus 6. 24 to 18. We keep subtracting 6. So what that tells me right here is that, look, it's constantly minus 6. So what we have is a first common difference, or I'll put CD. Now, when you have a first common difference, what that should tell you is that we are dealing with a linear equation. Okay? If we have a first common difference, you have a linear equation. Very important bottom line. Okay? So now... Since this is a linear equation, what you are going to be able to do is find the equation of the line. And in order to do that, all you need are two points. Uh, you've done some of this in geometry. You did this definitely in Algebra 1. Uh, and let's go ahead and pick the first two points right here, 0, 36. And I'm going to pick the second point as 3, 30. Why choose points that are super big when we don't need to, right? I think zero and three are very easy numbers to work with. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead, go over here, and I'll write down the two points that we're gonna be using. We have zero, 36, and three comma 30. Step one, what do we do here? Gotta find the slope. We have an equation for that, and then y is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 over x sub 1. If you forgot that equation, make sure you go back and remember it. <clears throat> I'll go ahead right here. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you label x1, y1, but you just got to be consistent. Uh, I can go ahead and put this as... I'll put this as x2, y2, and this point is x1, y1. All right. And hopefully you'll see why. So let's go ahead and just start plugging in numbers. Uh, y2 is 36. y sub 1 is going to be 30. Okay, this is at 3, comma 30 right here. And then we have x sub 2 is 0, and y sub uh, x1 is positive 3. All right. It doesn't matter if we switch things around and made um, 0, 36 as x1, y1. You still would get the same answer. So let's go ahead and simplify this out. And I have 30 minus, uh, 36 minus 30 is 6, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and we end up with negative two. So there's my slope. Step one. Step two is now let's come up with the equation of the line. 
And what I like to use is the point slope form and the equation for point slope form goes y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1 and that is your point slope form. So what we can do now is we take the slope and I take one of the points and I just plug things in and figure out and when I sum, simplify and solve for y that will automatically get you the equation of our function. It doesn't matter which point we use, but I know that zero is always a nice, easy number to plug in. So how about we use zero comma 36 as our first point? And zero comma 36, we plug in for x1 and y1, not for x and y. So I want to go ahead and plug in right here y minus, and then we have we're going to use 36, and don't forget, let me put right here 0, 36, in case you're wondering, where am I getting those numbers from? And that right there is equal to your slope, which is negative 2. And then we have x minus x sub 1, which is 0. If you plug in the other point, 3, comma 30, you should get the same answer. Because remember, the point, or these points are on this line. So it doesn't matter which point you use uh, from the table, you should get the same answer and will as long as you do the work correctly. So let's go ahead and simplify this. And when I distribute the negative 2, I got negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 0 is 0. And so that's partially the reason or the main reason why I decided to choose this number. We'll go ahead and add 36 to both sides and y is equal to negative 2x plus 36. So first off, we figure out the common differences in our in our table. If they do have a first common difference, then I know it's linear. And if it's linear, I go through the steps that I just showed you to come up with the equation of our line. And y is equal to negative 2x plus 36 is the equation of the function that will go through all of those points in problem number 10. So we dealt with a linear function first. Now let's take a look at problem number nine. So remember step one, let's take a look at our inputs, see if the intervals are consistent, they are the same. Uh, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, so very good, they all have intervals of one. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is the first common difference see if that exists. So <clears throat> from 24, 424 to 16, that's negative 8. From 416 to 7 or 376, that right there is going to be uh, negative 40. From 376 to 304, that's a negative 72. 304 to 200, that's a negative 104, and 200 to 64, that is a negative 136. So if I look at these numbers right here, there is no common first common difference. They are all, all over the place, or it looks like they are. So what we do again is this, we repeat this process and look for the second common difference. And if there is a second common difference, then that means that my um, the table or the function here happens to be a quadratic. So for me to go from negative 8 to negative 40, okay, let's see what happens. That looks like it's negative 32. From negative 40 to negative 72, subtract 32 again. From negative 72 to negative 104, that's another sub minus 32, and negative 104 to negative 136. That is negative 32, subtracting again. So what we have here is a second common difference. What that tells me is that this function is a quadratic. Now coming up with the equation to this takes up quite a bit of work. Now, so in chapter one, one of the things we did was we had three equations and three variables, and we learned how to solve things out. 
And that's what we're going to have to do here. We're going to take three of the points, okay? And let's go ahead. Uh, actually, we're going to use our three values of y. Yeah, three, three of the points. So I'm going to go ahead and use the first three because I like using smaller numbers whenever possible. So 1, 424, 2, 416, 3, and 376. All right, so let's go ahead and use those three points. All right, so one of them is 1, 424. Let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do now is use the standard form of our function, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and plug these things into our function. All right, so we have right here, 424 is y, or your output which is f of x. So I'm going to put 424, and that is equal to a x squared, so the 1 is x, plus b times x, and then plus c. And we're going to plug in 1 for x. And so now let's go ahead and simplify this out. We have 424 is equal to a plus b plus c. 1 squared is 1. a times 1 is a. Okay? And then b times 1 is b, and then plus c. So there's point number 1. All right? Now let's go ahead and repeat this, okay? And I will do this with the second point right here, which we have is 2, 416. So I plug things into our function. We have 416. That's the output is equal to a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. We're going to go ahead and simplify this function. So we got 416 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. And then we repeat this for a third time with our third point, which happens to be 3, 376. And so we have 376 is equal to a times 3 squared plus b times 3 and then plus c. So repeating this, we have 376 is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. So we have our three equations. Okay, I'll go ahead and star them. We got these three equations and we need to put them together and we will use the help of the addition method to come up with a, b, and c. So let's go ahead and start by using the first two equations right here. Let me go ahead and maybe I'll put a line down kind of separate things and try to keep things as organized as possible. All right, so let's start with equations, the blue and the red equation. Okay, we'll just use the different colors here. And I'm gonna go ahead right here, we'll put 424 is equal to A plus B plus C. We have, I'll put right below it, equation number two, which is in red. I've got 416 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. And so we have to be able to eliminate things. The, the ones that have common, uh, greatest common factor, hopefully is one. And so what we should get rid of is c. But remember, I, I can't just add those two up because it's not gonna work out nicely. I wanna go ahead and have to multiply the bottom equation by negative one. And so by doing that, that'll change this to negative 416 is equal to negative 4a minus 2b minus c. This equation right here stays the same. 
and I'll go ahead and just slide that over. So what we're going to do now is add the two equations up. Therefore, it's called the addition method, right? So we're going to add these two up. 424 plus negative or negative 416. That right there will get you 8. And then now we have negative 3a and then minus b. There's one of our equations. Okay. Let's go ahead, we gotta repeat this process. And you could choose equation in blue and the equation in green. And I think that's the best choice because uh, we don't have to worry too much about finding the uh, lowest common multiple, great. Okay, so it makes things real easy. And let's repeat this again. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, 424 is equal to a plus b plus c. And then we have the equation in green, 376 is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. Once again, in order for us to get rid of an, the c term, got to multiply everything by negative 1. All right, so in doing so, this we got negative 376 is equal to negative 9a minus 3b minus c. Let's go ahead and add these two equations up right here. And now we have 424 minus 376 is 48. That's equal to 8, negative 8a minus 2b. So now we started, we got rid of the c's, and let's use these two equations. and eliminate once again. Uh, looks like to me, I know that the common factors between one and two happen to be two, uh, or the, sorry, the low, least, lowest common multiple. And so we can go ahead and let's set this up. I got, I'm gonna go ahead. I've got eight is equal to negative three A minus B. I have 48 is equal to negative 8a minus 2b. We'll take these two things. Let's get rid of the b. Remember, one needs to be positive. The other needs to be negative. So what I could do right here with the top equation, let's multiply that by negative 2. So what that will get me, we have negative 16 is equal to 6a plus 2b. And that is equal to 48 is equal to negative 8a minus 2b. We'll add this up. <clears throat> this looks like it's going to get us 32 is equal to 2a. And actually, that's negative 2a. Divide both sides by negative 2, and a is equal to negative 16. So what we have found now is the a term of our function. Next up, we want to find the B term. In order for us to find the B term, okay, we're going to find B. We go ahead and take A, and let's plug it into one of the two equations that we just dealt with. Uh, I'll go ahead and plug it into the equation as 48 is equal to negative 8A, or sorry, negative 8, and A is negative 16. And then we have ourselves minus 2b. So we'll go ahead, simplify this out. Looks like uh, negative 8 times negative 16. That is negative 128. Or actually positive 128 minus 2b. We have negative 2b is equal to negative 80. Divide both sides by negative 2. And B is equal to positive 40. So we have found B. The last step right here is let's find C. And we're almost done. We might as well use the first equation. Uh, 424 is equal to A plus 3B plus C. 
plus b plus c might as well make things easy or as easy as we as it can be and then we solve for c and c right here happens to equal 400 just when you think you're done or not because then we want to come up with our equation we got f of x is equal to we know what a is it's negative 16 so let's plug that in we got negative 16 ax squared right so negative 16 x squared plus bx so b is uh, 40 so we have 40x and then plus c which happens to equal 400 and there you have it we have now come up with the equation of a quadratic based off of knowing first off the first and common differences and if, if those exist and then coming up with our equation for three equations three unknowns and using the addition method to help us find a b and c